Welcome to Sister Wives, our rewatch season four, episode nine, Mary's baby decision. And she actually doesn't make a decision this episode. Um, but it's called Mary's baby decision. I know. And I have to warn you that I am deeply, deeply, deeply unenergetic today. As soon as it starts getting cold at night and the nights get longer and the She's trees... ready to hibernate. Absolutely. My body is like, we shall buy things in preparation for the long winter. Eat many foods, sugar and simple carbs to sustain us. We will lose interest in all of our long-term activities so we can, we can uh, prepare for a lower, harsh winter. Like, I don't want to do anything. I'm just walking around the house sighing dramatically. John's like, what is with all this? And I'm like, oh... And then on top of it, our little dog is sick. Dying. Well, I mean, we're all dying in some sense. But he is not dying anytime soon because I have decreed he's going to live to 18. And he's almost 14. So he's got quite a few years left of work here in the family. But he's downstairs with a humidifier and his medication and gentle little butt scratches and back pats and all that. So let's get to what people really want to know, too. Did Cody get wet? No, did Cody have gloves? No, but he did pee his pants. No, she, he's, he claims, it looks like, to me it looks more like he sat in a puddle. But he claimed that he was sweating, but it was literally just his rump. Which we got a real close-up view of. So now we know all about his pecs, his amazing six-pack abs, and his firm buttocks. Anyway, so the episode is a couple earlier in the season, I think this season, Mary got a trip to Mexico. It was not an 11 days fiesta. It looked like maybe it was like two or three days. Something like that. They did three things. They took, you'll never guess, what kind of car? A convertible. Oh, they had a convertible there. Um, and then the only other storyline, this episode, this really, 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 I mean, we always joke about nothing happens in these episodes, but these, these must have been, I think, originally one hour episodes that they either cut in half for replays, which I remember they used to do, or they, I don't know, I cut out stuff, or I don't know what is happening, but it does not feel like a full episode, because it has, it feels like, um, when you watch an episode of Bluey or other kids' cartoons that are like seven, eight minutes, it has that same sensation of like, here's this super condensed story. Now, it makes sense, Bluey being an absolute treasure of a show, pulls off the medium. S Sister Wives and Cody does not. And the whole thing was just depressing because we just saw in real life the episode where Mary's talking about leaving Utah, and it's clear that Cody... Leaving Utah? Sorry. She is leaving for Utah. She's leaving Flagstaff for Utah, which it looks like it's going to be dragged over who knows how many episodes. So we don't actually know when this is going to happen. If we're going to see it this season, next season, two seasons from now, in 2037, we don't know when we're actually going to see her leave. But she's in the process of telling people. And it's so clear that Cody's just like, eh, whatever you want. And so it's kind of sad to go back because... However he feels, there's a lot of debate about, does he, did he ever love the original wives? Does he only love Robin? Can he love anyone other than himself? All of that. He did seem to have some genuine affection. And what is, so they go down to Mexico. What is hilarious to me, and I'll put this on TikTok and maybe on YouTube, is that from behind, him and Mary are looking out at the jungle. They have the same haircut. From behind, it's like that, um, that Brad Pitt looks like his girlfriend's thing. So if you Google Brad Pitt, uh, Brad Pitt looks like his girlfriend's or Brad Pitt haircut is like his girlfriend's, there's like a million results of Brad Pitt with all of his different girlfriends and how they all have, like, whoever he's with, if it's like slick down hair, he has slick down hair. If it's like froofy out, his is also froofy out. If it's, you know, all of that. And so it definitely gave that from behind. You and your wife have the same haircut. Just much like John and I. That's a joke, because we don't. <laughs> Thanks for joining me here, John. How, are you low energy, too? You're making fun of me with all my dramatic sign. No, I've just been told I can't say anything. <gasps> that is so, not what happened. Don't say anything. <gasps> John Kenneth Haverstock, you will, too, say something. Say something about the episode. They get wet. Just stop it. No, you're gonna, now you have to say something. So where do they go? 
someplace in Mexico. Did you even pay attention to where? Uh, an underground love grotto. Okay. I also did not pay attention to where they were at. I also was spending a long time fighting my pen because I wrote with a gray pen, which is not a problem, but last time I wrote with a teal pen, and so I can't actually read anything. All I can see is the teal. Uh, so they, they cut back to Mary's, um, Mary's birthday party where Cody's holding Solomon and it is wonderful for a man or a woman to hold their child. I never saw, I'm going to go back and watch, I don't ever remember seeing Cody carrying truly, but every time I see Solomon, he's carrying, it's clear that this child is somehow more special to him than his previous ones. And it's just, it just makes me so mad because it's like, yeah, I mean, I get that objectively maybe certain births mean more but you do go out of your way to hide that you go out of your way to like make sure that you're giving each child a similar amount of attention and when they're adults you might have children that you get along with that are more in line you have the same hobbies you have the same interests all that but that doesn't mean you just abandon the rest of them um just in case you didn't know and if someone could get the word to cody that like you try to maintain relationships with your kids even that the ones you don't like has sailed it has sailed it has run aground uh, there's no survivors. There's no survivors. So they go to Mexico. Uh, it consists of basically three things that they go and do. They go to some underground. Well, first they went to. Well, first they had a hotel that was near the ocean, which is cool. A condo. A condo that they rented, and then they went to the the Love Grotto under underground. And then no, they played no, with the dolphins. No, Wasn't no. there something else? Yeah, they walked up some The Aztecs. Okay. Where his butt got wet. Yeah, so he's like, I'm sweating really bad. But it was literally... So when people sweat, don't... They, I don't know. I'm not buying that he sweat and just got his, his, his tushy. It looks more like to, he sat down on something. It was one of the, they went to one of the pyramids and they climbed it, which I didn't think you could do. Maybe you could back then. I, I, I saw some TikTok where everyone was yelling at some gal who climbed him. And then when she got to the bottom, they attacked her. I think she thought everyone was too cheering. Too bad that didn't happen in this and, episode. And she was like this, and everyone, she, I guess everyone thought everyone was cheering for her. What, what happened on my computer? Oh, girl. I don't know. So then um, the cutaway is to Janelle and Christine trying, um, taking the test for their real estate um, license. Because they think it's a but good it's way. But it's not just Janelle and Christine. It's Janelle and Christine, and Robin has to insert herself. But Robin is explaining to us about them taking the test, which is good because I'm sure Janelle and Christine couldn't discuss it. And then later on we find out that one of them passes and one of them fails. It's not really a surprise which is which. But it's a good thing Robin was there so she could translate to Cody and explain everything. Yeah, so they call Cody and Cody just, I don't know if he can't hear them or what, but he keeps going, who, who, what? And they're like yelling in this restaurant. Janelle passed. Christine failed. Failed. Christine did not pass. Christine is a loser. No, she didn't, they didn't say that last bit, but it was a little bit like the, that scene from Roseanne. Did you ever see that? It's a pretty well known maybe, scene. Maybe they called him mid coitus. Dad's dead. Dead. No. He's no longer with us. He's passed on. I don't know what you're talking about. He sends his love. Bye. Tell me in the comments if you know that scene where Jackie has to call some cousin and tell her that dad died. Dad's dead. Wow. I'm telling you, it's a brilliant, it's, it's, a, it's a really funny little slice of, she's like, I'm not doing that again. Sounds fun. Tell me if you actually know what I'm talking about. This might be a very niche event, but I think it's a pretty well-known scene. Um, and it's not, no, I don't think Christine's stupid. It's just really clearly that this was Janelle's thing from the beginning. She wanted to do it. She got the book. She's been studying. And Christine was like, got the book and then was like, oh, it looks really big. I'm not really that interested. And then was like, well, maybe I'll do it. Well, maybe I won't. Gosh, you know, and she does have a newborn. So it's not really that surprising that Christine is not as into it as Janelle is because that is what they have said literally every time it's been brought up. So it's also not as, it would have been sad if Janelle had failed. And Christine had passed after J Janelle has worked so hard and Christine's been like, Neh. So Janelle passes, Christine fails. I think we see one other episode where they mention Janelle's career, but that's about it. And then, um, so then they, we cut back, they're in Mexico, they play with the dolphins, which I'm Oh, not... before this, before this. Well, oh, well they have- Oh, look at me, look at me, look at me. Look at me! What is I'm a polygamist! Yeah, so they have these, like, tour guides. 
and Cody has to go out of his way. And this is the thing I wrote down. They clearly don't care. Yeah, the, the tour guide is a guy and a girl. They were both attractive people. And he had to go out of his way about saying, well, Christine, my other wife. And she's like, other wife? He's like, yeah, I have four wives. And she's like, oh, okay. And then they had to laugh and laugh. And I, oh gosh, I used to hate this. But I have to say, as much as I hated hokey, hokey, look at me, Cody, it, it was an improvement to our current rage against the world, Cody, who seems to hate all of his wives and hate his kids and hate the world. And is just angry all the time and lies. So like his whole like showboating thing might have been annoying to me as a viewer, but gosh, he has become a worse person over time. It becomes more and more apparent every, every season. Um, he's got some real killer, serial killer eyes going on. So then I guess as they left, Mary was like, oh, she's cute. And Cody's like, well, what does that mean? And to me, it seemed like he was pretty open to the idea of, because he's like, that's what you said about Robin. You said Robin was cute too. Are you implying? And I'm like, and then of course they cut to Christine being like, no more, no more women, you know, all that kind of stuff. But to me, I got the impression that he actually was kind of like, oh, did, did Mary get hit by a bolt of lightning about another wife? Well, well, well. Then he's like, well, obviously, I'm, this is not an open family. I don't want any more. But he seemed a little too into it when they were walking in the parking lot about it. And I'm like, she does not want your crusty old butt. Right? Then they go and we very, very briefly see them play with the dolphins, yada, yada. We get to the big title of the episode, which is he sits down. And to me, this is what's so weird about them, which is they apparently haven't been discussed. We discuss stuff all the time. All the time we're discussing stuff. What? We like each other. We do like each other and we do spend every day together. But if I still, if I only saw you every fourth day, I still feel like we would maybe moving these conversations along. Because he's like, how do you feel about in vitro? And I'm like, have you guys not discussed this since the, since the doctor's appointment? And that does, I mean, the number of times that I have said that in the past few seasons, where he's like, Chris, um, Janelle and I had a fight and we didn't talk for six weeks. And I'm like, didn't talk for six weeks? A fight like that, if you wanted to resolve, needed to be discussed within like two days, max, max, two, three days, max there needed to be. Otherwise, people are, are, you know, a week you're filing for divorce if you were a legally married couple. So the idea that he thought six weeks was normal, I guess that's how their family works is they just don't ever talk about anything. But he sits down to discuss in vitro and where she's feeling, what she's feeling. And it feels like they haven't spoken in, in months and which is so they weird. They probably haven't. Well, and I okay. This is what I need me to blah, blah, blah. when you are in Words a relationship with someone, especially those of you who have been married. Do you talk about things like this? Like, if you were considering having another child, it, would this be an ongoing discussion in your household that it like routinely came up? Like, maybe you didn't sit down and say, "Okay, it's time to come to a decision." But you would, throughout the time, like we have discussed, I mean, we talk about Most stuff. Most people can't wet their pencils in three other places. I know. That's so gross, John. Yes. Um, but the point is that. Especially if one were to say that about one's kid's girlfriend. Yes. Super gross. John wants to make it known that the reason that he always brings that joke up is because he is so offended on the behalf of Cody's children and their partners. This is not like some fun sex joke. It is a constant reminder that Cody is the worst person on earth. Yes. I mean, objectively not the worst, but if we're talking like maybe TLC stars, he might be some of the worst. I know someone told me that, that Ed, Big Ed, is worse, but I don't know. I, the sheer I mean, volume of people that the, Cody's the, badness affects. I, I could see him running head to head. I mean, I don't know, Big Ed, but unless he has three wives and, like... Didn't didn't like him on the show no. we watched of his. Yes. And 13 kids that he has, whose life he is essentially... Well, 12 kids he essentially is awful to. Like, I don't want to hear... Right. He, you know, it was just Big Ed trying to sex traffic somebody from the Philippines. Yeah. When we watched. I think it was the Philippines. I think so, too. Uh, yeah, anyway. I'm not going to look it up. <laughs> um, but my point is, if you are married, tell me, do you have ongoing conversations? We talk about things like, what if we lived in New Orleans? And we'll be like, oh, this is a good restaurant if we ever lived in New Orleans. You know, like, could you ever live in Iceland? Could you ever live in Europe? Like, we have conversations about things that aren't even happening. 
let alone things in our life about like, you know, what if this happened in our future or our son didn't like our school or the middle school is not a good fit for our family or our well goes dry or blah, 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 blah. And he's like, hey, stranger who I haven't seen in years, how do you feel about in vitro? And I feel like he's doing a pretty aggressive push. And she kind of starts crying and she explains that she feels like she's too young to be an empty nester, but it, she also feels too old to be starting over. And I, I totally get that. I think that's very, very common for people, especially people who had children young. And she says, I wish it would just happen naturally so that um, I would just know it was, it was the right decision, like it happened. She, she doesn't realize you have to you have to have sex to have yeah, it Yeah, I mean, naturally. I wonder if some of that was a push for him to be intimate with her more often, even back then, but I don't know. And then she starts crying and she says, I feel stupid that I don't know what I want, but I don't have an answer for you now. And he goes, well, do you want to put this on the back burner? And she says, well, it's not really on the back burner for me. I'm constantly thinking about it. And he makes some vague statement about, well, I'm not going to wait forever. And he's like, well, do you want to find out, first of all, if your eggs are even viable? And she's like, not totally sure. And they kind of leave it there. And that's really significant because my memory is, having not watched this episode in a long time, is that she eventually comes back to him and says she is ready and he's already done. Yep. But we will, we will find out if there's any more nuance to that. But, but a lot of people have told me... Mary was the one who said no to in vitro. And if this is the conversation they're referring to, which I think many of them are, she did not say that. She specifically said, I don't know what I want. I'm not ready to give an answer right now. Um, I, I'm frustrated that I don't know what I want. She laid out her stuff. Um, and Cody, I think, Cody just decided in his mind that was it. And that was, that was done. And he, he moved on. Um, I think is how it kind of went. So that was the episode. It looks like the next two episodes are sort of, they're not a tell-all, but they're like a, you ask questions and the Browns answer and this kind of stuff, which is like the worst because there are always things like, what's your favorite food? Wow, you have a lot of kids. How are you such an amazing dad? Oh man, you guys must get jealous. And then the women are like, no, we work it through because we're amazing. Oh, oh. What do you do on birthdays? Like It's all like softball questions. Seemed perfect, so now we don't have to recap it, right? So my thoughts are that I, I, I think the tell-all should be more like a, a FBI investigation. They should be hooked up to lie detectors. They should be asked and, questions. And shock things. Yeah. So when they do lie, they get I, shocked. I think... I think that Christine and Janelle are about as honest as they can. I think Cody is 50-50. I think he's a lot more honest than he really should be. Like when he says stuff like, I want to stay with Janelle so Robin respects me. You're a little bit like, whoa, you have no self-awareness for how bad that answer was. But it's also like, delicious, we see inside the head of a madman. But then occasionally he lies by saying things like, I don't prefer one wife over the other. Stuff like that. Um... I do think, I think Robin is constantly, constantly spinning, spinning what's actually happening into the best version of what she thinks will happen. And it, you know, the best thing is when she's trying to dunk on Christine and she accidentally outs herself as, as a bunch of stuff being a lie. But we're getting into a different season here. So thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you later. Bye.